Yashar Jasher 44. And the sons of Yishmael, who had bought Yosef from the Midianim, who had bought him from his brethren, went to Mitzrayim with Yosef. And they came upon the borders of Mitzrayim. And when they came near unto Mitzrayim, they met four men of the sons of Midan, the sons of Avraham, who had gone forth from the land of Mitzrayim on their journey. And the Yishmaelim said unto them, Do you desire to purchase this slave from us? And they said, Deliver him over to us. And they delivered Yosef over to them. And they beheld him, that he was a very comely youth, and they purchased him for twenty shekels. And the Yishmaelim continued their journey to Mitzrayim, and the Midanim also returned that day to Mitzrayim. And the Midanim said to each other, Behold, we have heard that Patifar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, seeks a good servant who shall stand before him to attend him and to make him overseer over his house and all belonging to him. Now, therefore, come, let us sell to him, rather sell him to him for what we may desire if he be able to give unto us that which we shall require for him. And these Medanim went and came to the house of Patifar and said unto him, We have heard that you seek a good servant to attend you. Behold, we have a servant that will please you, if you can give unto us that which we may desire, and we will sell him unto you. And Patifar said, Bring him before me, and I will see him. And if he please me, I will give unto you that which you may require for him. And the Midanim went and brought Yosef and placed him before Patifar. And he saw him, and he pleased him exceedingly. And Patifar said unto them, Tell me what you require for this youth. And they said, Four hundred pieces of silver we desire for him. And Patifar said, I will give it to you if you bring me the record of his sale to you, and will tell me his history, for perhaps he may be stolen. For this youth is neither a slave nor the son of a slave, but I observe in him the appearance of a goodly and handsome person. And the Midanim went and brought unto him the Yishmaelim, who had sold him to them. And they told him, saying, He is a slave, and we sold him to them. And Potiphar heard the words of the Yishmaelim in his giving the silver unto the Midanim. And the Midanim took the silver and went on their journey, and the Yishmaelim also returned home. And Potiphar took Yosef and brought him to his house that he might serve him. And Yosef found favor in the sight of Potiphar, and he placed confidence in him and made him overseer over his house. And all that belonged to him he delivered over into his hand. And Yahuwah was with Yosef, and he became a prosperous man. And Yahuwah blessed the house of Potiphar for the sake of Yosef. And Potiphar left all that he had in the hand of Yosef. And Yosef was one that caused things to come in and go out, and everything was regulated by his wish in the house of Potiphar. And Yosef was eighteen years old a youth with beautiful eyes and of comely appearance, and like unto him was not in the whole land of Mitzrayim. At that time, while he was in his master's house, 
going in and out of the house and attending his master, Zelika, his master's woman, lifted up her eyes toward Yosef, and she looked at him. And behold, he was a youth, comely and well-favored, and she coveted his beauty in her heart, and her soul was fixed upon Yosef. And she enticed him day after day. And Zelika persuaded Yosef daily, but Yosef did not lift up, lift up his eyes to behold his master's woman. And Zelika said unto him, How goodly are your appearance and form! Truly I have looked at all the slaves, and have not seen so beautiful a slave as you are. And Yosef said unto her, Surely he who created me in my mother's womb created all mankind. And she said unto him, How beautiful are your eyes, with which you have dazzled all the inhabitants of Mitzrayim, men and women. And he said unto her, How beautiful they are while we are alive, but should you behold them in Sheol, surely you would move away from them. And she said unto him, How beautiful and pleasing are all your words. Take now, I pray you, the harp which is in the house, and play with your hands, and let us hear your words. And he said unto her, How beautiful and pleasing are my words when I speak the praise of my Elohim and his glory. And she said unto him, How very beautiful is the hair of your head. Behold, the golden comb which is in the house. Take it, I pray you, and curl the hair of your head. And he said unto her, how long will you speak these words? Cease to utter these words to me, and rise and attend to your domestic affairs. And she said unto him, There is no one in my house, and there is nothing to attend to but to your words and to your wish. Yet, notwithstanding all this, she could not bring Yosef unto her, neither did he place his eye upon her, but directed his eyes below to the ground. And Zelika desired Yosef in her heart that he should lie with her. And at the time that Yosef was sitting in the house doing his work, Zelika came and sat before him. And she enticed him daily with her discourse to lie with her, or even to look at her. But Yosef would not hearken to her. And she said unto him, if you will not do according to my words, I will chastise you with the punishment of death and put an iron yoke upon you. And Yosef said unto her, Surely Elohim who created man looses the fetters of prisoners, and it is he who will deliver me from your prison and from your judgment. And when she could not prevail over him to persuade him, and her soul being still fixed upon him, her desire threw her into a grievous sickness. And all the women of Mitzrayim came to visit her, and they said unto her, Why are you in this declining state, you that lack nothing? Surely your man is a great and esteemed prince in the sight of the king. Should you lack anything of what your heart desires? And Zelika answered them, saying, this day it shall be made known to you, whence this disorder springs in which you see me. And she commanded her maidservants to prepare food for all the women, and she made a banquet for them, and all the women ate in the house of Zelika. And she gave them knives to peel the citrons to eat them, and she commanded that they should dress Yosef in costly garments and that he should appear before them. And Yosef came before their eyes, and all the women looked on Yosef, and could not take their eyes from off him. And they all cut their hands with the knives that they had in their hands. And all the citrons that were in their hands were filled with blood. 
and they knew not what they had done, but they continued to look at the beauty of Yosef and did not turn their eyelids from him. And Zelikah saw what they had done, and she said unto them, What is this work that you have done? Behold, I gave you citrons to eat, and you have all cut your hands. And all the women saw their hands, and behold, they were full of blood, and their blood flowed down upon their garments. And they said unto her, This slave in your house has overcome us, and we could not turn our eyelids from him on account of his beauty. And she said unto them, Surely this happened to you in the moment that you looked at him, and you could not contain yourselves from him. How then can I refrain when he is constantly in my house, and I see him day after day going in and out of my house? How then can I keep from declining or even from perishing on account of this? And they said unto her, The words are true, for who can see this beautiful form in the house and refrain from him? And is he not your slave and attendant in your house? And why do you not tell him that which is in your heart, and suffer your soul to perish through this matter? And she said unto them, I am daily endeavoring to persuade him, and he will not consent to my wishes. And I promised him, him everything that is good, and yet I could meet with no return from him. I am therefore in a declining state, as you see. And Zelikah became very ill on account of her desire toward Yosef. And she was desperately lovesick on account of him. And all the people of the house of Zelikah and her man knew nothing of this matter, that Zelikah was ill on account of her love to Yosef. And all the people of her house asked her, saying, Why are you ill and declining and lack nothing? And she said unto them, I know not this thing which is daily increasing upon me. And all the women and her friends came daily to see her, and they spoke with her. And she said unto them, This can only be through the love of Yosef. And they said unto her, Entice him and seize him secretly. Perhaps he may hearken to you, and put off this death from you. And Zelikah became worse from her love to Yosef, and she continued to decline till she had scarce strength to stand. And on a certain day, Yosef was doing his master's work in the house, and Zelikah came secretly and fell suddenly upon him. And Yosef rose up against her, and he was more powerful than she, and he brought her down to the ground. Zelikah wept on account of the desire of her heart toward him, and she supplicated him with weeping, and her tears flowed down her cheeks. And she spoke unto him in a voice of supplication and in bitterness of soul, saying, Have you ever heard, seen, or known of so beautiful a woman as I am, or better than myself, who speak daily unto you? fall into a decline through love for you, confer all this honor upon you, and still you will not hearken to my voice? And if it be through fear of your master, lest he punish you, as the king lives, no harm shall come to you from your master through this thing. Now, therefore, pray, listen to me, and consent for the sake of the honor which I have conferred upon you and put off this death from me. And why should I die for your sake? And she ceased to speak. And Yosef answered her, saying, Refrain from me, and leave this matter to my master. Behold, my master knows not what there is with me in, in the house, for all that belongs to him he has delivered into my hand. And how shall I do these things in my master's house? For he has also greatly honored me in his house, and he has also made me overseer over his house, 
and he has exalted me. And there is no one greater in this house than I am. And my master has refrained nothing from me, excepting you who are his woman. How then can you speak these words unto me? And how can I do this great evil and sin to Elohim and to your man? Now therefore refrain from me, and speak no more such words as these, for I will not hearken to your words. But Zelikah would not hearken to Yosef when he spoke these words unto her, but she daily enticed him to listen to her. And it was after this that the brook of Mitzrayim was filled above all its sides, and all the inhabitants of Mitzrayim went forth. And also the king and princes went forth with timbrels and dances, for it was a great rejoicing in Mitzrayim, and a holiday at the time of the inundation of the sea, Shichor, and they went there to rejoice all the day. And when the Mitzrayim went out to the river to rejoice, as was their custom, all the people of the house of Potiphar went with them, but Zelikah would not go with them, for she said, I am indisposed. And she remained alone in the house, and no other person was with her in the house. And she rose up and ascended to her temple in the house, and dressed herself in princely garments, and she placed upon her head precious stones of onyx stones, inlaid with silver and gold, and she beautified her face and skin with all sorts of women's purifying liquids. She perfumed the temple and the house with cassia and frankincense, and she spread myrrh and aloes, and she afterward sat in the entrance of the temple, in the passage of the house, through which Yosef passed to do his work. And behold, Yosef came from the field, and entered the house to do his master's work. And he came to the place through which he had to pass, and he saw all the work of Zelikah, and he turned back. And Zelikah saw Yosef turning back from her, and she called out to him, saying, What ails you, Yosef? Come to your work, and behold, I will make room for you until you shall have passed to your seat. And Yosef returned and came to the house and passed from thence to the place of his seat. And he sat down to do his master's work as usual, and behold, Zelikah came to him and stood before him in princely garments, and the scent from her clothes was spread to a distance. And she hastened and caught hold of Yosef and his garments. And she said unto him, As the king lives, if you will not perform my request, you shall die this day. And she hastened and stretched forth her other hand and drew a sword from beneath her garments. And she placed it upon Yosef's neck. And she said, Rise and perform my request. And if not, you die this day. And Yosef was afraid of her at her doing this thing, and he rose up to flee from her. And she seized the front of his garments, and in the terror of his flight, the garment which Zelikah seized was torn. And Yosef left the garment in the hand of Zelikah, and he fled and got out, for he was in fear. And when Zelikah saw that Yosef's garment was torn, and that he had left it in her hand, and had fled, she was afraid of her life, lest the report should spread concerning her. And she rose up, and acted with cunning, and put off the garments in which she was dressed, and she put on her other garments. And she took Yosef's garment, 
and she laid it beside her, and she went and seated herself in the place where she had sat in her illness, before the people of her house had gone out to the river. And she called a young lad who was then in the house, and she ordered him to call the people of the house to her. And when she saw them, she said unto them with a loud voice and lamentation, See what an ivory your master has brought to me in the house? For he came this day to lie with me. For when you had gone out, he came to the house. And seeing that there was no person in the house, he came unto me and caught hold of me with intent to lie with me. And I seized his garments and tore them and called out against him with a loud voice. And when I had lifted up my voice, he was afraid of his life and left his garment before me and fled. And the people of her house spoke nothing, but their wrath was very much kindled against Yosef. And they went to his master and told him the words of his woman. And Potiphar came home enraged, and his woman cried out to him, saying, What is this thing that you have done unto me in bringing an Ivri servant into my house? For he came unto me this day to sport with me. Thus did he do unto me this day. And Potiphar heard the words of his woman, and he ordered Yosef to be punished with severe stripes. And they did so to him. And while they were smiting him, Yosef called out with a loud voice. And he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said, O Yahuwah Elohim, you know that I am innocent of all these things. And why shall I die this day through falsehood by the hand of these uncircumcised wicked men whom you know? And while Potiphar's men were beating Yosef, he continued to cry out and weep. And there was a child there, eleven months old. And Yahuwah opened the mouth of the child, and he spoke these words before Potiphar's men, who were smiting Yosef, saying, What do you want of this man, and why do you do this evil unto him? My mother speaks falsely and utters lies. Thus was the transaction. And the child told them accurately all that happened, and all the words of Zelechah to Yosef. Day after day did he declare unto them. And all the men heard the words of the child. They wondered greatly at the child's words. And the child ceased to speak and became still. And Potiphar was very much ashamed at the words of his son, and he commanded his men not to beat Yosef any more. And the men ceased beating Yosef. And Potiphar took Yosef and ordered him to be brought to justice before the priests, who were judges belonging to the king, in order to judge him concerning this affair. And Potiphar and Yosef came before the priests, who were the king's judges, and he said unto them, Decide, I pray you, what judgment is due to a servant, for thus has he done. And the priests said unto Yosef, Why did you do this thing to your master? And Yosef answered them, saying, Not so, my lords, thus was the matter. And Potiphar said unto Yosef, Surely I entrusted in your hands all that belonged to me, and I withheld nothing from you but my woman, and how could you do this evil? And Yosef answered, saying, Not so, my lord, as Yahuwah lives, and as your soul lives, my lord, the word which you did hear from your woman is untrue, for thus was the affair this day. A year has lapsed to me, since I have been in your house. Have you seen any iniquity in me, or anything which might cause you to demand my life? And the priests said unto Potiphar, Send, we pray you, 
and let them bring before us Yosef's torn garment, and let us see the tear in it. And if it shall be that the tear is in the front, rather in front of the garment, then his face must have been opposite to her, and she must have caught hold of him to come to her. And with deceit did your woman do all that she has spoken. And they brought Yosef's garment before the priests, who were judges. And they saw, and behold, the tear was in front of Yosef. And all the judging priests knew that she had pressed him. And they said, The judgment of death is not due to this slave, for he has done nothing. But his judgment is that he be placed in the prison house on account of the report, which through him has gone forth against your woman. And Potiphar heard their words, and he placed him in the prison house, the place where the king's prisoners are confined. And Yosef was in the house of confinement twelve years. And notwithstanding this, his master's woman did not turn from him, and she did not cease from speaking to him day after day to hearken to her. And at the end of three months, Zelichah continued going to Yosef to the house of confinement day by day, and she enticed him to hearken to her. And Zelichah said unto Yosef, How long will you remain in this house? But hearken now to my voice, and I will bring you out of this house. And Yosef answered her, saying, It is better for me to remain in this house than to hearken to your words, to sin against Elohim. And she said unto him, If you will not perform my wish, I will pluck out your eyes, add fetters to your feet, and will deliver you into the hands of them whom you did not know before. And Yosef answered her and said, Behold, the Elohim of the whole earth is able to deliver me from all that you can do unto me. For he opens the eyes of the blind and looses those that are bound and preserves all strangers who are unacquainted with the land. And when Zelichah was unable to persuade Yosef to hearken to her, she led off going to entice him, and Yosef was still confined in the house of confinement. And Yaakov, the father of Yosef, and all his brethren who were in the land of Canaan, still mourned and wept in those days on account of Yosef. For Yaakov refused to be comforted for his son Yosef, and Yaakov cried aloud and wept and mourned all those days. <laughs>